The F-22 Raptor may be slated to retire once the next generation air dominance fighter comes online, but in the meantime, it's in the midst of a massive $11 billion upgrade to make sure it remains the king of the skies right up until it flies into the sunset. And while many of these upgrades remain classified, one little discussed effort may just re-tip the scales of power in the Pacific toward the U.S. Navy. Let's talk about the Air Force's low-drag tank and pylon program and why, despite being developed for the F-22, it may just become an essential part of F-35 operations at sea. The F-22 Raptor has about 18,000 pounds of internal fuel capacity, giving it a combat radius of about 679 miles, meaning it can fly out to a target 679 miles away and still make it all the way back. But in order to give the F-22 more range, it often flies with a pair of external fuel tanks, often called drop tanks. Now, each of these drop tanks carries about 4,000 pounds of additional fuel, giving the Raptor a new combat radius of about 980 miles. But these drop tanks are not particularly stealthy, and even when they're dropped, they still leave a bit of a pile on behind, compromising some degree of the F-22 stealth. And that's where the low drag tank and pylon program comes in. These new stealthy drop tanks will give the F-22 the same added range without compromising the Raptor stealth. And when they drop off the wing, they'll drop off clean, leaving no pylon behind to compromise the Raptor stealth even once the fuel tanks are gone. Now this is a big deal for the F-22 in a near peer fight against an adversary state like China. But as handy as these drop tanks would be for the Air Force, they could be a much bigger deal for the U.S. Navy. China's anti-access area denial strategy in the Pacific prioritizes the use of long-range anti-ship weapons to prevent any other nation's vessels from being able to operate in large swaths of the South China Sea, extending more than a thousand miles from Chinese shores. China's strategy may be best exemplified by weapons like their hypersonic anti-ship weapon, the DFZF. This is a boost glide vehicle that's carried aloft via their intermediate range DF-17 ballistic missile. And it's designed specifically to engage American aircraft carriers at ranges of about a thousand miles. Now this is a huge problem for the U.S. Navy because its longest legged carrier fighter, the F-35C, has a combat radius of only about 670 nautical miles, or around 771 miles. And that means that if a fight were to break out, America would have to sail its carriers close enough to China to launch combat sorties to put it well within reach of this nuclear-capable hypersonic anti-ship weapon. Now, the Navy has a number of programs already underway aimed specifically at this problem, like the MQ-25 Stingray, which is a carrier-based drone refueler that will be able to fly out to meet the F-35 or F-A-18 to extend its combat radius, as well as the F-A-X-X, a sixth-generation fighter that the Navy intends to have on its flat tops by 2035. Now, we don't know much about this aircraft yet, but we do know that the Navy says it'll come with a big increase in speed, payload, and range. But the F-35C is expected to keep flying alongside this new F-A-X-X fighter for 40 more years to come. And that means the Navy could still use a solution to the F-35C's range problem. And that's where the low drag tank and pylon program comes in yet again, because this past August, Lockheed Martin's Director of Advanced Aircraft Programs, O.J. Sanchez, said the low drag tank and pylon program has direct applicability to the F-35. Now, to be clear, that does not guarantee that these stealthy tanks would bolt right up to the F-35's wings, but it does mean that doing so is possible, maybe with some modifications. And with that in mind, I went ahead and crunched the numbers, doing some back-of-the-envelope math using publicly available figures to see if these new stealthy fuel tanks could give the F-35C the boost in range that it needs to engage Chinese targets. Now, the F-35C already has the largest wingspan and greatest internal fuel capacity of any of the versions of the F-35, with the ability to carry about 19,750 pounds of fuel. Now, that gives it a range of about 1,540 miles, or a combat radius of about 770. 
But with the addition of the F-22's stealthy underwing fuel tanks, each carrying 4,000 pounds of additional fuel, it would increase the F-35C's range to about 2,164 miles, giving it a combat radius of about 1,082 miles. Just enough to keep a carrier a bit outside the reach of China's hypersonic anti-ship missiles, at least in theory. Of course, getting there doesn't matter much if you can't carry ordnance with you, so let's talk weight. The F-35C has a maximum takeoff weight of about 70,000 pounds. Its dry weight alone is 34,580 pounds, and we're talking about carrying 27,750 pounds of fuel. Now, with the weight of the tanks included, we're now talking about a bit shy of 8,000 pounds left over for the pilot and ordnance. Now, the best suited weapon to take out Chinese coastal defenses would likely be the stand-in attack weapon, which weighs in at around 1,030 pounds and can be carried internally by the F-35. Of course, the AIM-120 D AMRAAM, the longest range air-to-air -air missile in service for the U.S. today, weighs in at around 350 pounds, and the AIM-9X infrared guided short range air-to-air -air missile weighs in at just around 187 pounds, meaning the F-35 would run out of internal storage before it ran out of payload capacity, making it entirely feasible to carry the added weight of these fuel tanks. Then to tell you the truth, the technology derived from the low drag tank and pylon program, as well as any modifications that may need to be made to the F-35's wings, could pay off in a number of other ways as well. In the future, rather than carrying stealthy fuel tanks under wing, the F-35 could carry stealthy weapons pods instead. Increasing the amount of ordnance the F-35 can carry into the fight without compromising its stealth profile. But I want to be clear that everything I just said was hypothetical, and in real life, it is exceedingly uncommon to fly an aircraft to its outermost limits, though it is widely understood that the U.S. under-reports those outer limits anyway. So whether or not this concept ever really does come to fruition will require the engineering prowess of the U.S. Navy, the U.S. Air Force, and Lockheed Martin, to name a few. But as far as I'm concerned, the concept definitely has wings.